There will be a day where there will be no bargaining. There will be no bargaining with our money. We cannot buy people over. We cannot make alliances with people. There is nothing that, like that. It is just us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. So before that day comes, don't we think we should prepare? Don't we think that we should get ready for that day? We should fear that day. We should be afraid that, am I in the state where I'm able to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for my deeds? And one of the questions, one of the five questions on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how, have, how did you spend your wealth in this dunya? How did you attain your wealth and how did you spend your wealth? Did we attain our wealth by halal means or did we sell beer and alcohol and rum and pork to gain our money? And with that money, did we spend it and did we waste it in the casinos when there was a masjid that needed to be built? Did we spend it on ourselves when there were people who needed food? Did we live lavish and extravagant lives while there were people who didn't have food to eat? People who starved? People who couldn't break their fast with even a single date because they had no dates? Because they had no clean water to drink? These are the questions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us. These are the things that we will be responsible for. So while we have the chance, while we have the opportunity, we need to go and fulfill our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to go and look after those who are less fortunate than us. We need to go and help masjids that need to be built instead of wasting our money on ourselves and extravagant lifestyles. And I'll, this is a very similar idea to the qurbani and the sacrifice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need our wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not benefit from our wealth in any way, shape, or form. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care what we give. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only cares about how and why we give it. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about. In the same way that Qurbani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Neither their flesh reaches Allah, nor their blood, but it is your piety that reaches Him. This same concept applies to giving charity. Our money does not give him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-sustaining. He is the most sufficient, the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us. But what we do, we do need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see our piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see our devotion. And if we really care enough to give a little back of what Allah has given us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going back to the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the day of reckoning, the day where we will not be able to bargain. Do we think that our lifestyle now is the lifestyle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased with? Do we think that our lifestyle now is one that we can honestly say that we give on a regular basis to those who need it more than us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many times in the Quran about our salah and our zakat. He tells us that zakat is something that we need to perform. And he, he pairs it with salat meaning that it is on a similar importance. It is almost as, not even, almost as important as Salah, maybe even as important as Salah. It is one of the five pillars of Islam, and we all know that. Are we willing to wait till the time comes for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us that the wealth that we have in this world is the reason that we are going to Jannah? Our wealth is either our Jannah or Jahannam, brothers and sisters. Are we, wait, are we willing to wait for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say that the millions and billions of dollars that you had in the bank went to waste while there were people who did not have food at night. And because of that, that is the reason that you are going to Jahannam. That same money that you spent your entire life chasing is the reason that you will spend almost eternity in Jahannam. Is that really worth it in our minds, brothers and sisters? That is what we have to think about. And nobody is saying that we are obligated, that we are demanded to go and spend everything we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to spend everything we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us just to spend what we can. If we are less financially stable than others, then we can give whatever we can. Even if it is a dollar, even if it is a dollar a week, we should still give that dollar a week so that on the day of Qiyamah, we could say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I gave every week a dollar because I could give a dollar that week. I gave what I could and I tried to fulfill my duty. If we are billionaires and billionaires, then we should obviously be giving, giving more than a dollar. We should obviously be giving more than what a different person would give. We should give based on what we have. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us more, then we should give more. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us less, then we should give what we can. Peace of Allah. And inshallah from today, let's make that attention that every time we come to the masjid, every time we see somebody who needs help, every time we see somebody who needs food to feed at night, inshallah, we should 
make it our ob obligation to give that person or to give that masjid help. We should make it our obligation to put our money in the donation box or put our money in their hands so that we can make a person's day better, we can make a person's life better, but we can build a masjid so that people can pray in that masjid. And the amount of blessings that we get for putting even a few dollars into building a masjid is beyond imagination, brothers and sisters. We cannot count that amount of blessings. For every child that reads Quran in this masjid, you will get blessings. For every person that performs two rakat nafa, we will get blessings. For everybody sitting here, you will get blessings just for helping fund that masjid, for helping build that masjid. These are opportunities that we need to look for. These are opportunities where even a little amount of money can go such a far way in our akhirah. We can build our jannah with a few dollars, brothers and sisters. It's just a matter of how we spend it and what intention we spend it with. And alhamdulillah, we all know that Eid, inshallah, is confirmed for Monday, September 12th. And Qurbani is, Qurbani is one of the, the things that we are very accustomed with. We know that Qurbani, we have to split it into three shares. We keep one for ourselves, we give one to the poor and needy, and we give one share to our family and friends. This is something we know. But did we even stop to think that, why is it that we give one third for ourselves, one third for, share, for our friends, and one third for those who need it? This shows the importance and the the importance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to giving zakat and giving to the poor and needy. It is on the same level as keeping for ourselves. The same way that we look out and care for ourselves, that is the same way we should care and look out for others who need it. There's a hadith, many hadith, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that what we wish for ourselves, we should wish unto our neighbors. If we want good and a good lifestyle with good food and a good house and good conditions to live in, then why is it that when our neighbor asks for food, we give them the worst food that we have? Why is it that when our friend asks for some help, we help them without even wanting to help them? We help them making it seem like we are doing them a favor. What we are doing is only for ourselves, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, what we do does not benefit the person that we are doing it. It does not benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is something that we do to benefit ourselves. So what we decide not to give zakat, and what we decide not to give charity, we shouldn't think that because I did not give this charity that a person will starve, and that because I did not give this charity, that person will not be able to eat tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one in control of the risk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one in control of the sustenance. Do not think that we are depriving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah. Do not think that we are depriving the person. Do not think we are depriving anybody but ourselves. Because on the day of Qiyamah, we will be the only one answering for that. There will be nobody else responsible but us for not giving to that person. To not giving to that person who needed food. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make sure that person gets the risk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make sure he will sustain that person. Because he has written everybody's sustenance for them. So there is no need for us to feel important. We are not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us to continue his deen. He does not need us to feed the needy. Because when we do not give zakat, there will certainly be another person to give zakat. Where we are not, where we do not perform, there will be other people who will perform for us. We are replaceable brothers and sisters. So we should not act and feel and think that we are important, that we are something that this ummah needs, something that Islam needs. We are nothing in this ummah. We are nothing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should act and live humbly, and we should give what we can humbly, and we should give in such a humble way that not even our left hand knows what our right hand gave. And that is a practice, a strong practice of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He gave in such a way that people did not even know. He, did, he gave in such a way that he says even his, the left hand did not know what the right hand gave. That is how humbly and how modestly he gave it. So it does not matter if we are rich or if we are big and powerful people. We should give zakat as though we are humble servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is how every single person should give zakat. And inshallah, right before I close, I want to bring up one, one more surah of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he devoted it to explaining what the fate of those who do not feed the needy and help the poor and help those who need it. And then the Surah al Ma'un, chapter 107, a very common and short surah that we hear all the time in Salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. 
أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله سبحانه وتعالى says Have you seen him, the one who denies the judgment? So he is the one who pushes away the orphan. This is the first person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. He, the person who denies the day of judgment, he is a person that will push away an orphan. He is a person that will push away those children that are in need. Children that have no father or mother. And we still, and that person will still push them away and deny them hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, وَلَا يَحُدُّ عَلَىٰ طُعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ فَوَيْلُ الْمُصَلِّينَ and does not persuade others to feed the needy. And that is a person who will say to somebody, that person there who is asking for money, that person who needs money, they do not really need money. That is us saying, that's the person who says, do not give to this person because they do not use it for the right purpose. Do not give to this person because they will waste the money. Do not give to this person because they, are, they do not really need it. That is not our concern, brothers and sisters. It is not our concern whether or not they need that money. It is our concern to fulfill the duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as we give, the moment we give the money, that money is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From there we have done our job, and we have done our command, our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from there on, it is up to that person, and it's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what they do with that money. It is not our job to judge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the judge. None of us have the authority, none of us have the authority or the ability to judge people except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we, when we see people, we should not think about what will they do with this money. Are they going to spend this money on alcohol? Are they going to spend this money on haram things? That is not our job. Our job is to give it the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is our job. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, so woe to those performers of salah who are neglectful of their salah, who do good only to show off. And this is going back to what we said, people who give to, so people can see them give. People who give to impress and to make other people see them and say, this person is such a big wali Allah, this person is somebody who is always in the, always in the masjid giving charity. This person gave hundreds, thousands of dollars in the masjid. But in reality, they are doing that so people can see them. They are doing that so people can see them give charity. That is not charity, that is us giving money for our own greedy purposes. That is us giving money so that we can raise our dunya purpose, but not to raise our alpha purpose. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will notice this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will realize this and He will make that zakat or sadaqa completely useless to us. He will make that money a means of nothing to us. Even if we gave a billion dollars, if you said, if you gave it with the intention of pleasing somebody other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it as though we gave nothing. That is what we have to look out for, brothers and sisters. When we give zakat and charity, we have to think that we are doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are doing this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with someone who gives money. We are doing this to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the last one is the one who refuses to give even small gifts. And this is also something that we should try to implement in our lives. When we are very rude and antisocial people, we do not go and we do not interact with people, we do not give gifts to people we know, we do not bring gifts to people when we visit them, we come empty handed. That, that is not a practice of the Prophet Muhammad. He tried his utmost best to whenever he went to visit somebody, he would bring something. Even if it is a date, even if it is the smallest gift, even the thought of you bringing something for them is enough to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will make that person very happy. It will make that person happy with you. And if that person is happy with you, then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you as well. And like you said, before we conclude, it is not our job to judge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge us based on what we give and our intentions. So inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are steadfast in our charity and steadfast in our zakat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who give without thinking twice. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are steadfast in the deen, inshallah. Let's make dua. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah, I pray and thank you that you have made us upon those to belong to the Ummah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, I pray that you make us amongst those who are steadfast in giving your zakat, Ya Allah. Make us amongst those who are steadfast in giving your sadaqah, Ya Allah. Make us amongst those who give for your pleasure and not for fame of this dunya, Ya Allah. Make us amongst those who never turn our backs on those in need, Ya Allah. Make us amongst those who instead of offer them what we would make it, offer them what we would want for ourselves, Ya Allah. Make us amongst those who are who, make, who are easy to comprehend that everything we have is from you, Allah, and everything we get is from you, Allah. Ya Allah, make our hearts attached to your deen, Ya Allah, and not attached to the dunya, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please make the temptations of this dunya easy for us to, to say no to, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please grant us the best in this world and the best in the after, Ya Allah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa fi adab al-nar. Ameen. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من طعد وطام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل على ملائكة المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون